Okay, so now that we've done all the pro forma adjustments for 15, we're going to repeat the process for 2016 to help further the understanding. Now there actually is a shortcut, so if this is something that you're very comfortable with, well there's actually a really quick way to do it. All we have to do is copy all three of our columns, paste them over here, copy the width, and then change our date to 2016. And you can see it worked perfectly. So we've got the EBITDA as defined as 3.9, and then the diligence adjusted EBITDA over here was 3.9. Well, why did that work so quick, and how were we able to save so much time? Well, it's because we did all the work in previous steps. We made all of our formulas dynamic, so that all we had to do was change the date to get the as-reported figures, and all of our adjustments were also dynamic, linking to their respective annual columns. So when we copied that over, they copied here as well. So this is, again, we did work in the past, saved us a ton of time in the future, and this whole year could have been done in under five seconds. However, for this video, we're going to go through it a little bit slower, one by one, again, just to help drive the point home. So I am going to zero out these adjustments, and we'll go through them. Okay, so again, we have our zero. Let's us know that everything is all square right now. We need to take the 2016 numbers as reported, strip out the management adjustments and the diligence adjustments so that our P&L on a pro forma basis reflects what the normalized expenses should be. So let's start with the owner comp. We're going to back out the adjustment here, and then we're going to reflect it in the management salaries here. You can see we're back in balance. Here's the owner expenses. Last time we put them in office in general, so we're going to do the same thing here. We're linking to office in general. And now we balance. Professional fees, we net them out. And then professional fees here, we reflect that adjustment. Again, you can see we're in balance. Selling expenses, copy it down, we're out of balance, and we need to reflect it in the selling expenses. So we're going to link to that adjustment down here. And then the last one is research, back it out, and then reflect it here. And I can't stress how important this entire process is. It might seem a little bit tedious, while we're doing all this before we've even begun to forecast. But when you start building your forecast, for this model it's going to be fairly straightforward. We'll have some variable expenses and we're going to have some fixed expenses. But as your model grows and grows and your diligence evolves and you have different layers for each expense and things change, it can become easy to lose sight of your original source. So as long as you have your original and adjusted source called out, it again just makes all of your work simpler and easier to follow and it reduces error. So it's just really important to make sure that you spend the time to understand this concept because if you over or under forecast an expense, well that has a huge hit on your P&L which also potentially has a hit on your EBITDA and the valuation and then how much debt you can raise and the cycle kind of continues and continues. So you just want to be as accurate as possible and that's why it's really important to go through this process. So let's just finish up here, back out the owner comp, Again, we've already partially built this one here, so I'm just going to add to it. Same with the professional fees. And then the last one is selling, which again, we also already have. So I'm just going to add to it, right? We're out of balance, add our selling, and then we are netted out to zero. And if we look to make sure everything is correct, the EBITDA as defined, is now the 391, and it matches the 391 here. So again, just to reiterate, we're backing out the management expenses, excuse me, the management adjustments, we're backing out the diligence adjustments, and we're reflecting them in the P&L up here so that when we look to the future, we have the correct and adjusted numbers as our frame of reference, and we'll get into that next.